Hi, I'm Kevin Booth. I'm a geospatial developer at Radiant Earth Foundation. Uh, and today I'm going to go over the QGIS stack plugin and basically um, you know, how to browse and download assets from the API, configure the API, uh, etc. Uh, so if you're not aware, I started the QGIS plugin at the last, well rather, stack sprint number four, the one in San Francisco. Uh, and initially it really just had some kind of basic functionality. Uh, improved a little bit since then. I uh, used to only work with Stack APIs 0.6, uh, but since that stack has come a long way and we've upgraded it to work with uh, Stack version 1.0 now. Just a brief outline of what I'm gonna cover. I'm gonna cover installing the QGIS plugin. It's really simple. Uh, adding uh, your own Stack API, uh, searching collections, um, doing any kind of spatial query, uh, temporal query, all that, uh, and then downloading assets from that. Um, and if you have COGS, we'll cover streaming COGS. Uh, and lastly, how to contribute to the project if you're so inclined. Installing the plugin is extremely simple. Uh, so first thing you're going to want to do is open up QGIS. Uh, and once it's loaded, uh, go up to the top bar here, click on plugins manage and install plugins. Uh, and then in the all list over here, you're gonna wanna scroll down till you see stack browser right here. Click on it, hit install plugin, and just like that, it's now installed. The plugin currently comes pre-configured with one API, which would be the EarthSearch API. It's the only one I could really find that conforms to the 1.0 spec. Uh, but if you have one uh, that you'd like to add, be added to the defaults, uh, put in a pull request on the GitHub uh, and I'll get that added. Uh, but to add your own API, uh, what you're going to want to do is go up to the web tab, go to Stack Browser, Configure APIs, and here you, we can see that we have the Earth Search API. We can go down here, uh, add an API, uh, you just type in the name that you want to associate with it. Uh, a URL to the API, that's the um, main endpoint. And then uh, authentication type, right now I don't have support for any authentication, but in the near future we will. Um, and then you just hit add uh, and it'll automatically get added to the list now. So here I've loaded up uh, an area of Austin and I've added a layer, which is my area of interest that I want to search for imagery on. Um, and so to First start, we're going to go up here to the toolbar, click on the little stack icon that you should now have after you download the plugin. Open that up, uh, and we can see here we have the EarthSearch API. Open that, and we can see all the different collections within that API. So one we're going to want to search uh, through is the Sentinel-2 COGS. Click on that. We, can, uh, we actually have three options uh, for uh, doing spatial queries. First one is to use the canvas. Uh, so everything that's basically in view right now, uh, we can search for. We can use a layer, uh, or we can draw an extent on the canvas itself, uh, and I'll use that. Uh, I'm going to use a layer, uh, my Austin AOI. So do that. Click there. Click OK. And we can also filter by cloud cover. Uh, here I'm not going to do that, so I'll just disable that. Um, start and ti end time period looks good to me, so we'll hit search. So the search results will cap out at 10 pages. Uh, here we didn't have 10 pages, uh, so it found everything that matched. Uh, and we have all of our items now. So you can go and click on an item. Um, and you can see here it'll highlight uh, the area that the uh, image recovers. Uh, and it'll give you a little preview, all the different metadata within it. You can find another one. Find another one, and yeah, you get the idea. So now we'll go over downloading items and adding them to your map. Uh, so here, let's find a couple of examples that don't really have any cloud cover, but that cover my area. This one actually looks really good. So we'll go and select that item. Here we can select the download path where it's going to be downloaded. Uh, for demo, it's fine here. Uh, and then we'll hit download selected. So you'll see this box that opens up and basically this shows all the different assets 
that are contained within the item and you can select which ones to download. Uh, so here I'm going to do this true color image uh, and I want to add it to my layer. I don't want to stream the cogs just yet. We'll do that in another example. Um, but that looks good to me now. Uh, here if you apply this item or apply this to all items in the same collection, uh, basically if you had selected multiple items here, um, it'll download the true color image for all of them. So we'll hit download. Then we'll get a little progress bar. And once it's downloaded, it'll add it to the layer. And there we go. So now we can zoom in. And yep, it looks like Austin. Now I'll go over an example of downloading a cog, well rather streaming a cog, and just showing how much more efficient that is than downloading the entire uh, file. So same thing, go up to the top, click on the stack icon, browse, do these cogs. Uh, here I'll just use my canvas extent, disable that, search. I will find one that just looks good. Let's see, too many clouds, not enough data. Um, yeah, sure, why not? Do that one. Download. Here I'll select the true color image. And here I'm going to add the stream cogs uh, checkbox here. And download that. And just like that, now the image is in here. And that was real time. So we can zoom in and it'll load more detail. Yep. Just like a cog should work. Now I'll go over an example that you'll probably run into. Uh, so a really simple one is calculating NDVI. Uh, so first we have our area of interest here, uh, the Austin area. Uh, we're going to go and search our catalog for imagery. So Sentinel-2 cogs, use layer extent, Austin. And then this looks good. Okay, so let's find some image that doesn't, that ah, looks good. No cloud cover. All right, select that one. Uh, and for NDVI, we want near infrared and red. So we'll select those two. Add them to layers and download. So first thing we're going to want to do is uh, clip it by our area of interest. Uh, so go up to raster, clip raster by extent. So we'll select band eight, use layer extent, Austin, yes. So we'll do B8, run that. Go over here, do it again for band four, B4, and run that, and there we go. So now we can delete the old two layers, and we have this here that's just clipped by our AOI. Uh, so now we're going to want to calculate NDVI. Let's go up to raster, raster calculator. Uh, so the NDVI formula is near infrared minus uh, red. over near infrared plus red. Okay, select our output and everything looks good. Hit okay. And here it calculated it already. So remove those two. And here we have our NDVI layer. Now we can change the color, uh, symbology. So we'll do single band pseudo color. Yeah, that looks good. And here we go. So now here's our NDVI layer for our area of interest. And I'll end with what I'm expecting the roadmap for the plugin to kind of look like. Uh, so first thing that's coming extremely soon within the next week is uh, authentication. Uh, so I'm going to initially support uh, query parameter authentication and bearer token authentication. Uh, so if you have a private API, um, you can search that through uh, the plugin. 
Uh, gonna add more query filters, so different types of metadata properties that you can filter on. Uh, and lastly, uh, loading labels. So for machine learning data, uh, you know, you have um, sometimes uh, raster labels or more specifically vector labels. Uh, and I wanna add in some functionality that will let you download the source imagery and the labels together. So like I mentioned earlier, uh, you can contribute to the project. Uh, if you find any bugs or you have pull requests for improvements, uh, just send them my way. Uh, there's the link to the GitHub repository. Uh, you can also reach out to me on my email, kevin at kb.gg, or my Radiant email, kevin at radiant.earth. Uh, and also on Twitter, I'm active there, so kbgg underscore. So I think that basically covers all the functionality in the plugin. Uh, if you have any questions on getting it set up uh, or you find any bugs, uh, again, feel free to reach out to me. Uh, you can find me anywhere. So, yeah. Thank you for your time. All right. Uh, if you guys have any questions, I'm here for that. No, no questions? All right. Thank you, Kevin. Um, so if there is no specific question for the QGIS plugin, I mean, we can open the floor for any uh, follow up questions from previous presenters. I think David is still in the session or if there's any general uh, stack questions that uh, we can all collectively discuss, uh, feel free to share on the chat box. Thank you, Kevin, again.
Kevin, we have a question for you in the chat box if you can answer. Sorry, I'm back. Um, so the question was, does the QGIS plugin treat the stream cogs like a normal raster layer? Uh, like, can you do band math on it as well? Um, so yeah, uh, QGIS itself handles all that. So basically all I do is I tell QGIS, hey, load this raster layer. Uh, and it um, either has uh, a URL or a path. Um, and it kind of does everything for you. So um, yeah. Uh, I'm pretty sure you can do uh, um, band math on stream cogs as well. <laughs> 